Hello there, Orla here and welcome to this training on holiday promotions with some ideas on how you can generate sales and profits over the holiday period. Um, I'm so grateful that you have joined me for this masterclass and let's get started. Um, so the masterclass is going to give you some ideas for Black Friday sales, Christmas and holiday sales, and then we'll finish off with some tips on New Year sales. And I think before we get into it, it's really, really important to remind you that you don't have to take everything I say on board. I always say that you should understand before you implement. So take on board what I'm saying in terms of, okay, it's something you could possibly do and do some investigation. Get out there, look around, look at what encourages you to buy over Black Friday, Christmas, holiday sales, New Year. Consider your ideal client, consider what works for them, consider what products and services you find sell already and then think, okay, what would I like to do? What would I like to do for my business? So by all means, use these as ideas, but don't feel that you have to do absolutely everything that I talk you through, because it's so important that you have the confidence to implement your own sales strategy, as opposed to just doing what I ask you. So let's get you confident. Let's give you some ideas. Let's add to your toolkit. Let's get you excited. And then you decide what works best for you. So let's get started with Black Friday. Now, Black Friday is a tricky one because it's not actually been around that long in the UK, it's around about 2007, 2008 when it started to take off. Um, but over the past few years, it's created huge, huge expectation and huge expectation amongst consumers. So while we don't have the traditional sales after Thanksgiving here, because obviously we don't celebrate it in the UK, Ireland and Europe, what we do have is a closer connection with the US, with the States as more things start to sell online. So Black Friday has become really, really popular with consumers. And what that means for you is if consumers are expecting to spend money at this time of year, and if you can create an offer that will appeal to them and market it effectively without jeopardizing your own success and your own sanity because I would never want you to reduce your prices for the sake of reducing your prices but if you can strategically plan it in advance you've got amazing amazing potential when it comes to Black Friday and Cyber Monday and the week-long deals that we're seeing right now. So what is all the fuss about when it comes to Black Friday? So They've been a firm fixture. Black Friday and Cyber Monday have been a firm fixture in the UK for over a decade now. So it's here to stay. I'll talk you through some ideas for anti-Black Friday offers, but don't try and fight it. Don't get pissed off with it. We can come up with some creative marketing ideas, but it is here to stay. And an estimated 7 billion was spent in 2018 on Black Friday and Cyber Monday offers. That is a huge amount of money in the UK. That is absolutely massive, you know? And what that equated to was in excess of 200 pounds per person, over 200 pounds per person. I think the average, according to a study by finder.com, was about 240 pounds per person. So that's almost as much as they spend in the post Christmas sale. So not quite as much, but almost. But when you consider how long the post Christmas sales have been around for, that's a pretty impressive figure. And 37% of Brits have deferred dropping pounds on clothing, electronics, major appliances and furniture until the release of Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. So again, when we refer back to that expectation that people have, if people aren't spending the money, it's because they expect there to be offers. So they're holding off waiting for these offers and then they're spending money on the day. So what is actually happening? One in six of us intend to spend money on Black Friday. That's a huge amount of people that are right now looking around and waiting for the right offers to come up. 
Black Friday spending is more popular with younger demographics, those under 45 than older demographics, which is really no surprise, considering the fact that the younger demographics are more aware, more used to shopping online, more used to shopping around. Stocking fillers and electrics are more and more popular, and many use it as a chance to buy themselves something they want. So what we noticed in 2018 was although the average spend had gone down, so the average spend per person had gone down in relation to 2017, the number of transactions had increased. So more people were spending slightly less, okay? Which is really, really important. Then when we look at Black Friday, so this year it falls on the 29th of November 2019, and Cyber Monday is obviously on the 2nd of December. So straight off the bat, one of the common questions that I've been getting asked is, should I do a day-long deal, a weekend-long deal, or a week-long deal? And we'll come to this in the promotion, but one option that you could do is a week-long deal. You know, so it's a Black Friday week. You could have a different offer per day. You could have different types of promotion. You could have a deal on the Friday, a deal on the Monday, and then extend it. But try and capitalize on this, you know, and if people are going to be spending for longer and more and more people are expecting week-long deals, then offer that because they'll take the pressure off you, but it'll give you more opportunity to sell. I would imagine more people will spend money straight away than later, but it gives you more chance to use a sense of urgency towards the end of the week. Um, online offers give, gives consumers greater choice and flexibility. So what you will find is that lots of consumers will research what Black Friday offers are out there. So they don't necessarily feel they have to buy straight away, but they will research and they'll see, okay, if I want something specifically, can I get it somewhere else? And as we mentioned, 220 spent on average per person and or 7 billion in total, a huge amount of money. And the average spend per person fell, but more people bought. So although the average amount they spent fell, more people were buying, so more was spent in 2018. More people will buy online than in store. And I think when you think back to what people's perceptions of initially of Black Friday were, we saw you know, fights in stores. We saw, you know, newspapers were full of people fighting over TVs, you know, punch-ups in supermarkets, rushing to shops. And it was portrayed as madness. It was portrayed as petty consumerism and very much an American thing that we didn't appreciate over here. And that's changed. You know, that's changed as it's bedded in now what people are actually doing is they're not going into stores necessarily for the madness and lots more people, much like the pattern when it comes to the Christmas shopping, they're buying online, you know? And for your perspective, you have to match the expectations of the consumer and you have to be able to provide what they're looking for. So are you able to take card or PayPal payments online? Can you process that payment quickly? If you don't use this as an opportunity to get your card payment set up and being able to take those card payments online. So because there's competition out there and your customers may shop around and they may look for the best best value this Black Friday, it's really important that they do not leave without completing the transaction. You know, there will be other businesses out there vying for their money. It is a competitive market, this Black Friday selling. So make sure that you can accept and finalize card payments online. And again, We've spoken about this. People are buying more and spending less. So according to Barclay Card, in 2019, transactions were up 10% year on year by 3 p.m. on Black Friday, despite spending value being down by 12%. Mm -hmm. So what could this mean? People are buying smaller treats for themselves. So they're not spending as much maybe on other people, but they might be buying more for themselves. So it's a great chance if you are dealing directly with your ideal client that you can coax them across the line to buy from you. And we'll discuss later in formulating your plan. You can then stay in contact with them and increase the lifetime value of that customer by owning your marketing process and encouraging them to buy from you again and again. 
maybe could also mean that people who did not mean to purchase anything were enticed to buy what was on offer. So we could have had a few lurkers out there last year that didn't think they were going to buy and then last minute spent smaller amounts. So there's so many reasons why this could be. And I think it's important for you to be aware that more people will buy online and they might look to buy for themselves, which if you can appeal to that, that's absolutely fantastic. So this new way of shopping has created an expectation among customers. It didn't exist previously. You know, it's new to this world of business. 20 years ago, we didn't have an expectation for sales before Christmas. You know, everyone waited until the day after Christmas and prices naturally went down. Now people, they, they don't want to pay full price for something unless they have to, you know. Um, they want to be able to buy most of their Christmas gifts earlier. It used to be the case that lots of the presents waited until December. Now more and more people are spreading their Christmas purchases over November and December, you know, and that's key because rather than leaving it till last minute or spreading it over a few months in advance, they are getting lots of their Christmas purchases done in November for Black Friday. So you're probably sitting there wondering, going, well, Orla, you've bombarded me with all of this information. You've told me the stats. You've told me that Black Friday could have amazing potential for my business. But you've also told me that there's competition out there and that other people are offering Black Friday deals. So should you offer a Black Friday deal? Should you? Um, I do not want you to do anything that does not feel right for you. You know, Black Friday offers are not for everyone and that's okay. One of the huge benefits of you offering a Black Friday deal as a small business owner is that it can be a great way of encouraging people who are on the fence to buy from you and you then take control of the marketing process and encourage them to become repeat customers. So what do I mean by that? Basically what I mean is you probably have lurkers in your marketing. You probably have people who are aware of you, but the time or something hasn't been quite right for them to buy from you. And if you can produce a Black Friday offer that speaks to them, that resonates with them, and you capture their email address, they come into your community, you can then present them with offers further along the line to increase the lifetime value of this customer and to make them more valuable to you. So, what you actually see lots of the bigger businesses doing is they make a loss. They deliberately make a loss on their Black Friday offers to get people to make that original purchase. So their Black Friday offer is actually a marketing spend for them. It's actually a marketing spend for them as they actively then think, OK, well, Facebook ads cost me money. Google ads cost me money. Promoting my business through influencers cost me money. I might as well just make a loss on this Black Friday offer because it's all marketing and I will keep them in my community and promote them again and again and again. So create a plan for your Black Friday offer. You know, do not reduce your prices. Do not offer a promotion unless you feel happy, confident and comfortable. But then create a plan. And we're going to talk you through how to do this plan. But then create a plan on how you can encourage them to buy from you time and time again. And I'm gonna mention this again. Reminder, don't do it. Do not do a Black Friday offer if you'll regret it. Don't do it if you feel like you've been forced into it. The last thing we want you doing is sighing and moaning and groaning that I did a Black Friday offer and fuck it, I reduced my prices, I operated at a loss, it was absolute bullshit, I sold fuck all and nobody wanted it. Because that's what I hear a lot of people doing. That's what a lot of people do. Create a plan. Only do it if, if it's right for you. But don't moan about Black Friday. Do not moan about Black Friday on social media when there is already an expectation among your customers for a Black Friday offer from some businesses, if not yours. Because last year I saw loads of posts on, oh my God, buy, buy from a small business this Black Friday, you know, support local this Black Friday. And I honestly wanted to comment on those posts and say, fuck off. Consumers have an expectation and they have an expectation for Black Friday offers. We will go through in a few slides, an anti Black Friday offer, but don't don't hate the system. Work with it to the advantage of you and your company. But 
no customer will buy from any business due to a sense of obligation. So we kind of guilt people into it by saying support local, support small. What we can do is we can leverage the power of social media marketing, the fact that you know your ideal client so well, the fact that you're close to your ideal client to cut through the noise in your marketing and reach them and encourage them to buy from you. And I think that makes so much more sense than giving out a Black Friday. But that being said, only, 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 only do a Black Friday offer if you're going to create a plan and it's something that you feel comfortable doing. So let's get in to creating your strategy. So it's a four step process. First thing is set a goal. Now, so what do you want to gain from this promotion? Is it sales? Is it a larger community? Is it more people on your email list? Is it to get rid of old stock? Is it to sell an old course? It, you know, what is it that you want to get out of it? Set a goal. Do not go into this shrugging your shoulders saying, I'll take whatever comes along. You know, send out the right energy to the universe and set an intention for what you want to get out of this. Then select your offers, you know, don't try and compete with Amazon and the big guns, rather select offers that your customers will appreciate. We'll, we'll look at that in the next slide. Um, have an upsell strategy. Right now, create an upsell strategy. Create a plan to get these customers to spend more with you in the long term. So it could either be an upsell that you offer at the time of purchase. So you could have some add-ons available as they purchase your Black Friday offer. Or it can be an upsell in a month, two months, three months, so long as you're aware of how you're going to maintain relationships with them and contact them in the future. And then market it. And market the fuck out of it. Commit to marketing. Do not hide it and somewhere on your website or somewhere on your social media and say, oh, I put out that Black Friday offer. It's everywhere. You know, I'll talk you through some tips on how you can market it. So choosing your Black, choosing your offers for Black Friday. Now, here are some suggestions. What I want you to do is take on board these suggestions. Google Get Professor Google out, start looking up, saying, okay, who offered, who, who presented offers like this in the past, be it for Black Friday or other sales? What did I like about it? What did I not like about it? Can I afford to do this? Does it work for my business? And then choose the offer that works best for you. I cannot tell you exactly what offer to do because I don't know everything about your business. But what I can say is that you have to be confident in your offer. So here are some suggestions. It could be a percentage discount off selected items. So you could say, okay, I'm going to have 10% off this, 20% off that, 30% off that. And it could be then something that you stagger, you know, for the first weekend, it's 30%, then 20, then 10. Or it could be, you know, 30% off shop-wide promotions. So what we saw ASOS did last year is they had 30% off everything, you know, and that's really good if you've got old stock to get rid of. That's really good if you've got a decent markup on some things, maybe not so decent on the other, but it will balance out and you can offer a shop wide promotion. ASOS did it, saw loads of um, Amazon did it across some things. Amazon kind of staggered and on different days. So if you can afford to do a shop wide promotion, do that. Um, discount old products. Have you got any stock that you want to get rid of? Have you got any stock that's collecting dust? You know, have you got any courses that maybe you created a year ago that um, you could sell? You could package up and you could sell. You know, you've got content sitting there. You know, you could turn around a course quite quickly. Now, for those of you who offer service-based business, I know we've got lots of massage therapists. I know we've got class-based businesses. You know, why can't you create an online course? Super quick, you know, record it like I'm recording this, do a YouTube video, do a video direct to camera, um, create a course on that and you can sell that. Maybe you want to have a one-time offer on your best sellers. Lots of you sell only one product, you know, or two products and you're like, no, I do not want to reduce it because this is the price I charge. But consider the option of having a one day sale. 
So you could build up, if people genuinely know they cannot get what you offer cheaper at any other time of the year and you build up enough anticipation and you budget correctly so that you know it's going to work for you, that could create a massive, massive buzz because they know it's a genuine, genuine deal. And your best sellers, you know that people love that already. You know that you could use that to get more testimonials. You can use that to get more reviews. You can use that to get more recommendations. So that's a fantastic thing for you to consider. Um, maybe you can't afford to give money off. You know, maybe you're like, actually, Orla, fuck off. <laughs> I can't afford to give money off and that's okay. You have to be comfortable with what you offer. But you could you could potentially offer free gift wrapping or free delivery. So maybe that's your Black Friday offer that for this weekend, this week, you're going to do free gift wrapping, free delivery, you know, and that creates an amazing potential for people as those costs can add up as well. Um, are there any other freebies you can offer instead of discounting? So for example, you know, buy my makeup and receive a free makeup bag. Have you got any samples that your company gives you that you can add in as an add-on? So buy X product and you get all this for free. Maybe you could partner with other businesses who are trying to reach your client base and you could say, actually, I'm going to work with this company. They're going to give me some samples. I'm going to give them some samples and it's going to help me create a really cool offer this Black Friday. Other examples that you might see are a mystery savings. I saw this in quite a few places last year where it was, it was quite a good clickbait actually. They were like, click here for mystery savings. Works really well. Um, another one is free gift with every purchase, you know, and a free gift with every purchase. You see this quite a lot in the chemists. You see it quite a lot in Boots and Superdrug where the makeup companies do it really well. And they say, you know, buy a purchase and you get this free gift. And what they're really going to do is presenting the gift as being a higher value than the original item itself. And that encourages you to buy. When it comes to offers, you could have daily deals. You could say Monday, we, well, well, Friday, we have this offer. Saturday, we have this officer, offer. Sunday, we have this offer. And that's a really cool way of, you know, having different offers, offering variation to your clients, but also encouraging them to take action on the day. And who knows, they might buy from you every day. Um, another thing, this is called like a doorstop. Um, offer is that you lower prices for a few hours only to encourage action. So rather than saying they're off for the entire weekend, you'd say between nine and 10 only, we have this offer. And it just means that people who are looking at it now, you know, rather than going off and having their coffee, going and getting a lunch and then coming back, but probably getting distracted and not coming back, they'll take action straight away. And um, Another thing that might work well for you, especially for service-based business, offer deals on gift cards, vouchers, etc. So, you know, spend £100 and get £125 worth of a gift voucher or worth of a class. So there's loads of ideas. The list is by no means exhaustive, if I can pronounce that word. Um, there are loads of other options out there. What's important is that you get your thinking hat on. You decide which one feels most comfortable for you, that you would really get excited about, that you know your ideal client will value, and um, get cracking. Now, I really want to chat to you about the anti-Black Friday. So the anti-Black Friday movement is growing in popularity, but has to be carefully done to manage expectations. Um, in my rant a few slides ago, you'll know that it's so important if you're embracing the anti-Black Friday that you don't make it about you. You know, make it about customers and their bigger vision. And what I don't mean is, we know it's hard for small businesses. We know that the competition out there is fucking steep, but the customer only cares about themselves. The customer, rightfully so, cares about them, what they want, their bills, their priority, their endless fucking to-do list. The fact that they have got shit going on in their life. And if we stick our head up and go, oh, hello, over here, bye from me, bye from me. It's going to piss them off because we can do it better. We can do it so much better. So if you want to embrace the anti-Black Friday movement, here are some ideas. And again, whichever idea you choose to implement, make it about your customers. So maybe you want to give something to your customers. Maybe you want to turn around and say, everybody is trying to get you to spend money, but I want to give you something. I want to give you an experience 
I want to give you a free report. I want to give you a free gift. I want to give you a free sales audit. I want to give you a free class voucher, you know? Make it something really exciting. So let's say you have got a cafe on the main street. You could turn around and say, okay, everyone coming in doing their Black Friday shopping gets a free coffee. All they have to do to redeem it is to bring in a receipt that proves that they shopped locally. I mean, your local customers would love you, guarantee you that's a Facebook post they would be delighted to share and you're doing something different, you're giving back to the local economy. And that's something that can be done online as well, you know? Um, maybe you want to give them something that they could use in January, you know, if you're giving vouchers, there's loads that you can give them. Um, another anti-Black Friday movement, and I would only rec recommend that you do this if it is in keeping with your brand and if you have the confidence to do this. Um, Cards Against Humanity um, charges $5 more on Black Friday weekend. Now, if you know Cards Against Humanity, it's very quirky, it's very direct, it's very funny. It's not something that's going to work for everyone, but I thought it was fucking hysterical. Um, Anti-Black Friday, you want to perhaps partner with a charity and offer profits to them. So you could say, okay, you know, 50% of all of our profits, 100% of all of our profits this weekend are going to go to X charity. Now, remember, if part of your plan is that you are going to own your fucking marketing process, if you're going to step up and if you're going to commit to staying in contact with every new customer detail that you are going to get in, breaking even is not a bad thing if you've got all of these new clients that you can sell to in the future, you know? So partner with a charity isn't such a bad thing. Again, if you have a physical location, maybe you can ask customers to bring in food for your local food bank. And um, one potential is that you could turn around and say, okay, um, for everyone, you know, for anyone, when I reach X sales on Black Friday, I'm going to go to my local supermarket and I'm going to spend a hundred pounds. And that is content gold for your social media because you take your phone, you record you going into the shops to do that shop you record a live, you share photos of yourself going into the food bank, you take photos in there, you tell the story of the people in this food bank. So not all does that demonstrate that you are doing an amazing thing, but it also means you've got content that shows just how genuine you are, just how much you care, and it documents you doing a really, really nice thing. Um, you could use the anti-Black Friday movement to promote topical causes. There are some amazing topical causes out there right now, and the biggest one being the environment. It is huge. So what the fuck? You know, we're hearing all of this about how the environment is precious. The environment is amazing. We need to protect our natural resources. But company after company after company are trying to get you to buy more physical products. So if you sell a physical product, promote how good you are for the environment. Massively promote how good you are for the environment. If you sell experiences, Think of ways to creatively promote your experience as saving the environment. So get some statistics. If we could save X amount of money been spent on plastic toys, plastic crap, um, sofas that we don't need, electronics that we don't need, what would that directly do for the environment? However, we understand that you want a treat, so why not come to me for a massage? You know, why not come to our classes? Why not buy this as a present? Um, Another idea that I thought was absolutely fantastic is, you know, if you have um, a, a decent venue, if you're a stylist, if you're a makeup artist, if you're a community leader, is maybe you want to have an, an event where you say, okay, guys, rather than buying new clothes, bring all of your new clothes and I'll show you how to create a new wardrobe out of it. Maybe you're going to turn around and say, okay, instead of buying a new bag, instead of buying a new pair of shoes, bring your old ones in and we'll show you how to repair them. You know, or we can do a free trade off for another donated pair. But there's so many ways that you can have an anti Black Friday movement. And again, you're getting more out of this because not only are you getting people who potentially spend money because they come to your events on this, but it's the goodwill that you're buying as well. And reminder that you can promote experiences over things. So, absolutely loads of ideas. So, where are we? You're going to set a goal. You're going to choose your offer, whether it's going to be more of a traditional Black Friday offer or the anti-Black Friday movement, putting your customer first and foremost. And then you're going to consider, well, what, what can I upsell? You know, if I'm getting these people to buy from me, can I upsell either at the time or 
can I upsell in the future? So first things first is that you're gonna capture their email addresses and you're gonna add them to an email list and you're going to commit to emailing them on a regular basis. Now, the most common thing that people say to me about emailing and email lists is they don't wanna fucking do it. And it's like, oh, but I'll just bore them, but they don't wanna hear from me. That's wrong. You know, if you've done your ideal client work and if you know your ideal client inside out, they want to fucking hear from you. They do. They genuinely care. They know that you care and it's really, really important to them. So commit if you don't already do it because you're going to need it to promote your offer. You're going to need your email list to promote your offer, especially if you've got a bank of existing customers. So commit to consistently adding value to these people in the future via email and just if you need to put that in your diary now for once a fortnight, once a week, um, once a month at a push, um, put that into your diary now. So one of the easiest ways to upsell is to have different variations of what you offer. Everybody knows I love a Starbucks. I go into Starbucks and, you know, you've got tall grande venti. So they'll be like, oh, do you want a grande? You know, or you go to McDonald's, you go to McDonald's and you order a burger and they'll say, oh, do you want fries with that? And you're like, oh, do you know what? Maybe I do want fries with that. But by the time you get fries, sure, you're as well to get a fucking happy meal because it's pretty much the same price and I could get a large drink and it would just be more economically viable. So I want you to consider the same thing. What upsells can you create at the time of buying? You know, and it will depend on your offer, but can you create any upsells? So if they were buying a lamp, could you give them some... Um, light bulbs if they were buying a discounted voucher to come to one of your sports classes could you give them a jumper can you give can you upsell a jumper for your child to wear at those classes a massage oil you know a maracas you know whatever your class is there's bound to be something you can upsell at the time of purchase to make it really easier for them mm -hmm. yes um, and entice it so it's how you do this so you should always present complimentary items on your website email or facebook shop next to the items that would look well you know so when you go into mns and you look at their meal deals at the end of every aisle they will have like a chilled section with all of the ingredients there together to encourage you to buy everything at once so if you're creating some graphics on canva can you have a photo of a voucher for your classes the jumper and um, you know whatever else that they need for your child to come to their classes and purchase that can you have a photo of your makeup your makeup bag your makeup brushes and the total price and what you're saving at the bottom as well so you have to present these things to people they are not detectives they are not on a hunting expedi expedition to find your offers, you have to tell them about it. Um, one option is that you, as part of your Black Friday, is that you could discount higher priced items so they feel like they're getting a savings and you could promote add-ons so it's a no-brainer for them to buy them. So if you are selling, I'm trying to think if you're selling, just an example, if you're selling a car, you could discount the car and then you could have the tires there at a reduced item. You know, if you are selling a, a massage, if you're selling, here's a massage, you know, and then you've knocked 10 pounds off the massage and they see a massage oil for a fiver, it's a no brainer for a lot of people to buy them because they're still making a saving, even if they buy both. So go and research upsells. Research when you, at the time of purchase, have bought an upsell. And this is definitely a conversation for your website developer. This is definitely a conversation for, you know, anyone who helps with your email newsletter that you can present up upsells in your newsletter. Because if you look at what's actually happening, you know, when you go on to Amazon, for example, and you look at a book, you can say, you know, you look to buy a book and then right below it'll say, um, commonly bought together and I'll encourage you to buy these other books and we'll put the three together and then the total price. Now, I'm not saying you have to compete with Amazon on price here, but what, I'm, what I am saying is, can you do that? Can you put that on your website? Can you put that on your Facebook? At the very least, you can list it in a post. You know, there are so many ways that you can do this. You just have to plan it out and choose to do it. Okay. 
So where are we? We have set a target for what you want to achieve. We have chosen your offer, be that the traditional Black Friday offer or an anti-Black Friday. We've looked at the concept of upsells. That's not something you have to do, but consider it. Um, We've also made it perfectly clear that you have to commit to email marketing. And now I want to chat about promoting your offers. So there's no point in having these amazing offers if you're not going to tell anyone about it. It's a complaint I do hear from people. Oh, I tried Black Friday, but it didn't work. And I asked them what they did and they list what they did. And I just want to scream because I'm like, it wasn't enough. You know, you have to tell everyone. And it's so much better if you have a warm list or an engaged community, as I like to call it. If you have an engaged community that already knows, likes and trusts you and you just have to present them. But when it comes to promoting your offers, always, always, always build awareness in advance, you know, in store, on social media, in your website, in your newsletters. You know, there's so many areas in which you can build awareness. Now, be consistent with your marketing. Get onto Canva, create graphics. So if you have a poster in your store, the feel and look of that matches the cover page on your social media. It matches the photos on your Instagram and your Facebook feeds. It matches the banner on your website. It matches the banner on your newsletter. Have the same message everywhere, you know? Be consistent so you maximize all opportunities. So get onto Canva, my friends, and create those graphics. If you're not sure, how to best do this, just look at anyone who's selling anything right now and go onto all of their social media and look at the consistent feel that they'll have across it. You know, your favorite singer, if they've got a concert coming up, your favorite designer, if they've just designed something, there is evidence of this everywhere. Um, Ensure you've got sign-up deals. So when a visitor perhaps lands on your website, you could say, you know, sign up here, you know, Black Friday, five days away, uh, sign up here to be the first to know about offers. That's something that you can create a landing page for and share on social media. Guys, we're going to have the most shit hot Black Friday deals. Um, Give me your email address and you'll be the first to know about it. For promotion, you can offer priority deals to your loyal customers and let them know of offers in advance. This I definitely recommend, my friends, because the people who are more likely to buy from you are the people who know, like and trust you. So let's work on this and let's create a deal for them you know they know about a they know about your deal first especially if there's limited quantity and b you're going to promote it directly um, to them via your newsletter so if your black friday deal is 15 percent off a certain item maybe to your database it's 20 percent off and mm-hmm. um, create a deal for the first few hours of black friday one that is shit hot and amazing and encourages people to act fast and then once you've got their attention and um, you can bring them back in. So other ways of promoting your offers, and I think I've drilled this one home, is update all graphics across all platforms. They're consistent and promote what you were offering. Share testimonials, share case studies from happy customers. Remind them that they're getting a deal, you know, remind them of what's happening. And um, partner with influencers to promote your deals. You know, can you create an army of people who were you going to promote about um, about what you offer? You know, can you build a group of brand ambassadors and um, run Facebook adverts? You know, if now isn't a time to embark in the world of paid advertising, I don't know when is. So can you run Facebook adverts? Can you install pixels? Make sure you install those pixels so that you can retarget these people in the future. So if they, you know, last minute chance to take advantage of our Black Friday week offer, you know, you clicked on but you didn't purchase, you know, so you could set up Facebook adverts directing them to your offer and you can set up retargeting adverts reminding them of the offer that they've already seen. Um, Pre-schedule your promotion in advance so it's automated and last minute. So what I would really recommend is that you get out a massive sheet of paper, you draw a line across the middle of it and you plot out a timeline the last date or the end of your timeline being you know black friday cyber monday the end of your promotion period 
and work your way back to today and think, okay, when am I going to decide on my offer? When am I going to create my graphics? When am I going to reach out to local influencers, to partners? When am I going to set my budget for my Facebook adverts and start them running? When am I going to contact my email list and let them know of the preferential offer? When am I going to share it in local Facebook groups? You know, plot everything out and schedule it. You know, with the exception of sharing in certain Facebook groups, you can schedule everything and the benefit of scheduling is that you're not going to chicken out and it's going to be super professional so you know short of a hurricane happening on the day you know that this is going to happen and you're going to get it done my friends we've discussed black friday so black friday may or may not be for you and it's okay if it's not it's absolutely fucking okay if it's not but let's look at Christmas and holiday sales and let's look at some tips and ideas for you to maximize sales over the Christmas and holiday period. And before we go on, yes, I will get equally as passionate about this. So the first thing to consider is that the UK is the highest operating market in Europe ahead of, <laughs> ahead of Spain and Austria. Okay, highest spending even. So what does that mean? The UK spends more, you know? We talk here of recession, Brexit. Now, Brexit may mean people are a bit more conscious on what they spend. Any, any amount of uncertainty may cause that. However, usually we're the highest spending market in Europe. Um, 42% of purchases will be made online. So there'll still be the rush. There'll still be the rush in the shops. People will still get out, get onto the high street, get spending. But more and more people are looking to spend online. So, you know, let's consider your gift wrap in there. Let's consider your postages if you want to do a Christmas offer with that. But also make sure that you take card payments on your website and make sure that people can pay you and complete the transaction on your website. Sorry, am I drilling that home enough? Um, nearly half of all sales will take place on or before November, right? So when you're thinking, okay, chronologically, Black Friday comes first and then Christmas. It's not, it's all blended in to one. So we looked at that, you know, more and more people are spending in November, Black Friday for Christmas and spending in December. You know, it's not that they're going to just wait last minute or spread it over for months. So you have to bear in mind that your Black Friday strategy forms part of your Christmas strategy. Um, but what are people spending on? What are the key things? Because it's gifts, food, socializing, my friends, really, really big one for all of the hairdressers, the beauticians, the massage therapists, everyone out there that helps with the socializing and traveling make up the bulk of the purchases. So there's loads of ways there in which people are spending their money. So let's create your strategy very, very similar to your Black Friday strategy. We're going to set a goal. What would you like to gain from this promotion? Sales, larger community, etc. And um, <clears throat> select your gifts. And that is what you're really saying. <laughs> selling. You know, unless you operate like a complimentary thing in terms of you're a hairdresser and you're going to compliment people going out for the festive period. You are a stylist and you're going to compliment. <clears throat> you can do that, but you can also package it up as gifts. Who is your customer is the next thing for you to consider because when it comes to gifts, you have two customers really. You have the end user, but you also have the person who's going to purchase it and market it. We need to promote the fuck out of this to make sure that you get the best. So select your goal. What do you want to achieve? I want you to set a clear intention. If you don't have targets, how can you aim for anything? So is it a sales amount? Now, <clears throat> my tip when you're setting a sales amount is you say, my intention is to earn a minimum of, a minimum of. Never say, 2000 because that's the cap say a minimum of 2000 would you like to bring some new customers in you know and um, would you like to bring former customers who are no longer engaging back into deal with you or would you like more people joining your email list or online community so set a goal i mean realistically it's going to be a sales figure you know and that's absolutely fantastic but set that intention as a minimum of so what are you selling and to whom so <clears throat> who is your customer? You know, is it the person, that's, is it somebody that's buying a gift for themselves 
or is it somebody buying a gift for other other people because that's going to impact how you market it because how will they know how will they do that research they're starting from scratch they might know that much about you or will the person will will you encourage people in your marketing to say hey I know you want me for Christmas why not tell your other half why not tell your family here's what you should share with them And then I want you to say, okay, what are you selling? How can you package what you offer as a Christmas gift? Okay, how can you package it as the gift of an experience? You know, how can you bundle what you have into an amazing hamper as a Christmas hamper? You know, Um, so there's loads of ways to do that. Present, gift card, Christmas experience, Christmas essential, you know, food, treats, etc., Um, If the purchase is not the end user, you may need to market to both the purchaser and the end user. And that's a really key one to decide upon in your marketing. So you can create, you know, you can make that really, really funny. Hey, Mary, I know you're getting fed up of the shit presents from Jack all year round. Um, Share this with them and tell them exactly what it is that you want. Really, really cool there. Um, When it comes to your marketing and marketing your gift, make your marketing Christmassy. Add some Christmas flair to your marketing. You know, think Starbucks, Red Cup and Boots 3 for 2. You know, they scream Christmas for so many people. People say 1st of November, Starbucks are going to have their Christmas cups. Oh my God, Christmas has finally started. Um, You know, you hear this debate that you should only have Christmas songs on the radio from the 1st of December onwards, because then it's definitely Christmas. You know, so make what you do Christmassy. And again, Get on Canva, my friend, create your graphics to be used across all platforms. Have a consistent approach in your marketing. Um, How can you market it? You know, Um, embrace the theme of Christmas in your marketing. You know, there's loads of different ways. You could create a helpful holiday themed videos on how to use it. The wonder of somebody coming to their local high street, buying from you, purchasing from you, you know, and then open it under the tree. You know, there's so many technologies out now that you can do things. Um, Maybe you want to create a gift guide. Um, You could create the ultimate gift guide and obviously have one or two of your products or services in there. And that's another thing that people can share with their friends or family to remind them of what they'd like them to buy. Um, Create a Christmas email marketing campaign. Um, showcase why you're different and why you can't be purchased elsewhere. Again, Facebook adverts, pixels and retargeting, you know, um, create, get crystal clear on who is buying what you offer. So maybe you want to do two adverts, one advert that is to the end user saying, I know you really want me for Christmas, tell your other half about me or buy me for yourself. You know, and then maybe you want to run an advert for the person who's most likely going to be buying that for them. And you do have to know your customer to do this. So go back over the ideal client in workshops that we've done and make sure that you know them. Um, So here are some examples of some really cool Christmas promotion. The 24 days of deals. We see this more and more. You know, we're only over Black Friday. And then the modern thing now is to have an advent calendar for December. You know, so 24 days of deals. But, you know, that is a potential we see department only deals so what you can see is people um offering deals on um certain departments for christmas so this present get this is a perfect christmas present you know for men this is a perfect christmas present for women you can promote it that way um small business saturday is an absolutely huge campaign that's coming out now which is encouraging people to shop local and also can you benefit from local Christmas fairs you know are there any local Christmas fairs you know which ones are working really well when you're chatting to the organizers of the Christmas fair I would be really keen to know about promotion you know because the problem with lots of fairs is no one fucking turns up you know so are they popular how do they promote it can you be promoted in advance on the guest list or the email list can they let people know make sure you take card payments you know what's the internet going to be like will the wi-fi work because you're going to need to have your card machine hooked up to your phone because people are going to say they don't carry cash and create a strategy itself around Christmas fairs you know how can you bring people to your stall when they walk in the easiest thing is chocolate and balloons to get kids over to you but how can you get people over to your stall so that you can make sales at the Christmas fair but do your research massively when it comes to Christmas fairs so there's loads loads of ways to promote your Christmas offers um 
Another way that you can promote them is to capture emails for future marketing. So much like your Black Friday, every ounce of time, money and energy that you put into generating new customers or generating new purchases over the Black Friday and Christmas period, capturing the email address is the bare minimum of what you should be doing so you can continue to contact those people time and time again. Another potential is at the time of the Christmas purchase that you let them know of a January offer to encourage them to come to you in January. I saw this done really rude, really well quite a few times in hairdressers and nail technicians. So it's true for a lot of industries, they know that they're going to be super, super um, busy during December, but they know that it's going to be like falling off a cliff come January. So I used to get my nails done and I go in and get my Christmas nails done. This is when I got them done once a month. Get your Christmas nails done. And when I was in there, they would give me a voucher for, I think it was like 20% off or a fiver off um, an infill in January if I used it before the 25th or something of January. Brilliant, because that fiver means a lot more in January than it does in December. Um, again, for your Christmas promotion, can you have strategic partnerships, influencers, other businesses, etc.? If you have the perfect children's gift, can you try and get into gift guides, local gift guides, you know, national gift guides? Who is producing gift guides? Can you be featured and um, get there as much as you possibly can? But also, maybe you want to send what you have out as Christmas presents to these influencers. You may not get a mention, it may not work that way, but... If it's right for them, if it's right for them, their children, their family, you just might get a mention and that works really well. Okay, let's move on to towards the end of our presentation or our workshop rather. And, you know, we're 50 minutes in now, so there's a lot to take in. But I want you to also consider the new year, new me market and the fact that lots of people will be looking to grow and develop in the new year. Now, We've already discussed in the last slide that if you have a business that isn't traditionally busy during January, that you will create or you can create an offer to encourage people to come back in January. And I'll give you some more examples just now. But for so many people like life coaches, business coaches, um, nutritionists, personal trainers, um, anything to do with this new year, new me, money saving, all of these people are going to be really busy in January. You're going to be so busy because for some businesses, Christmas can be quiet and that's where you have to focus on relationship building onto the busy New Year period. Um, Anti-offers can work well in the last quarter as you also build relationships. So what that basically means is, you know, during November, December, it's not the best time for your clients to naturally buy from you. You know, I could try and sell Easter eggs all through December but nobody's going to buy them it's the same as if I try and sell eggnog in January nobody's going to buy them because there are traditional times when people are going to buy what you offer so just make your peace with that you might do a Black Friday offer for you know a class that they can use in January but use it to build relationships use it on your social media to you know be consistent show up every day share your story document what's going on but understand that for obvious reasons they may not want to purchase from you um so the new year actually the new year market holds a massive potential but not a traditional time when people spend a lot so it has to be something that they really want and what they really want is change and 2020 is actually huge because not only is it a new year but it's a new decade so the spending trends tend to be on weight loss new hobbies fitness making or saving money new job etc so if your business falls into one of those categories you've got a great opportunity so what's your strategy? Your strategy is, first of all, to know their resolutions. What do they want to achieve? Do they want to achieve weight loss? Do they want to earn more money? Do they, do they want to save money? All of these companies I see going around, um, <clears throat> you know, selling um, gas and electricity by coming to a dual provider. There's huge potential there. Is it a case that you are going to, um, you know, use it to sell your network marketing business and the fact that after January, people are going to want a new change to fulfill their potential and start a new business? There are loads of ways. Um, identify quick wins, you know, before helping them in the long term. Obviously, this has to align with your values, but how can you help these people get the quickest successes? Because 
you know, statistics show that by the third week in January, most people have given up on their New Year's resolutions. So in order for you to help these people purchase from you in the long term, you have to develop quick wins. Um, I remember years ago doing the Kellogg's Cornflakes Diet. I don't know if any of you ever heard the Kellogg's Cornflakes Diet. It was something that they very heavily promoted in January because obviously people are broke after Christmas that if you had, you know, a bowl of cereal for breakfast and a bowl of cereal for lunch and a proper dinner, you would lose weight. I don't think I lost weight. I think the size of my bowls were far too big. But it was a great way of getting you away from the food you've eaten for Christmas onto breakfast and buying from them consistently. So how can you help them get the quick wins that they want before you help them with the long-term sustainability? Very, very important for anyone who helps build businesses, anyone who offers coaching, nutritionists, um, personal trainers, very, very important that you can offer quick wins and long-term support. Um, make it a no-brainer for them. Money will be tight. You know, they have been spending quite considerably and in January, money will be tight. So you want to clearly demonstrate that you're going to save the money over time by working with you. And you want to clearly demonstrate that it's in their best interests. And again, always have your follow-up. You want to encourage sales in the future. So can you offer them an introductory product, an introductory service that encourages them to stay with you in the long term? So can they sign up for a class before signing up to a group coaching program, before signing up to -to one-to-ones? You know, what can you offer them? But ensure you've got a follow-up and that you take these people on a journey. So my New Year's sales strategy success tips are use the holiday um, period to prepare, build relationships and show clients that you understand them and where they are now. One of my favorite things was when I had a friend who was in network marketing and they sold this thing called a clean nine. And the clean nine is basically nine days on a cleanse and it's supposed to reset your system. But what she would do is rather than all Christmas, like showing herself working out or, you know, showing her uh, looking good and looking amazing, she would very much show herself enjoying Christmas. So she did go out and look amazing. She went on nights out. She shared her Christmas dinner. She shared herself sitting in front of the fire in a selection box. She shared her New Year's party. And she really, really showed that she was having a Christmas and New Year just like everyone else. But then 3rd of January, she'd go, fuck, I've eaten way too much. I've overindulged. I definitely want to lose weight. Um, please come and join me on this amazing clean nine cleanse. I'm starting in four days. Comment below if you'd like to order. And she talked them through the cost of it and how, you know, it was X amount per meal. And consider what people have just spent on food in December, it was peanuts. So that one worked really, really well at helping her generate really, really good sales and also introduce people who may not have purchased her other products into what she offered so she could work with them in the long term. Again, present them with a quick win in January. This has to align with your company values and you have to be able to help them in the long term, but people are looking for quick wins. Um, And it's better they come to you where you're genuine and you do want to help people in the long term than they go somewhere else. Um, Provide them the accountability to help them achieve their results, okay? So people want accountability. That's what they want. You know, that is what they want. They want the support in achieving what it is that they want. So how can you provide accountability? And always, have I drilled this home enough? Have I mentioned this point enough? Always, always keep in contact and encourage them to buy more from you. Get your email list up and running. Build that community marketing and keep going. Right, so final Um, example on this is here are some examples of what common businesses do in January so you can learn from the experts and again it's important that you don't try and compete with these people but you take on board so Amazon they have new year book categories on their website um, and it's literally like new year new me and they promote all of their motivational books so they're not promoting their presence anymore they're promoting those books that help motivate people that help inspire people to create new changes in the year ahead how can you do the same? Or how can you do something similar that's applicable to your business? Um, every fucking gym is going to have a new year offer. Many tie you in. I've lost count of the amount of gyms I joined for a minimum of six months in January because I was getting like half price. 
I've lost fucking count. You know, it has happened to me time and time again. Um, so gyms often have an enticing offer to join and many for a minimum period. So how can you do something similar that is, in, again, in line with your values and what you offer? Um, restaurants, spending needs to be easy. There was a time, doesn't happen as often now with the Starbucks app, but there was a time when Starbucks used to have this little booklet that they would give out at the end of December to their regulars. And they didn't give it to everyone. And it would have a little um, 50p off that you could go in every day and you would get 50p off your coffee for the month of January. So for Starbucks, that's huge because again, most people want to save money in January, so they don't want to spend, you know? Um, restaurants, loads of restaurants give half price Sunday to Thursday in um, restaurants. Pizza Express do it, lots of places do that. So, you know, when you're planning your new year, plan now, plan now what you're going to do. You know, if you have a business that is going to work best in the new year, set your plan in place to build relationships for the next few months and then to promote. If you have a business where you think you're going to be quiet in the new year, plan now. So, you know, you've accounted for the variance in the sales, but you're still going to encourage people to come through the door. So we've gone through a lot there, haven't we? So we're literally just on the hour mark. So we've gone through Christmas and holiday periods hold massive potential for small businesses to sell to their customers at a time they're naturally buying. You know, do not do a Black Friday or Cyber Monday offer unless you really, really want to, but know that it's just part of the process. It is not the be all and end all. Do it only, only, only if it works for you. And you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan for capitalizing on this that can include embracing what's happening or creating a anti-Black Friday marketing initiative. And then you want to ensure you capture email addresses. I'm back, I'm back to this fucking point again and commit to adding value in the year ahead after the holiday period so you maximize all marketing efforts. You know, it's not about the first purchase. The bigger, bigger companies can afford to make a loss on the first purchase because they look at the lifetime value of the customer. So if the customer only buys from you once and it costs you more money than what they spend, you mightn't feel great. But imagine that customer bought off you once a month for two years. Imagine that customer bought off you once a week for six months. You know, think about it, guys. Think about it. You know, it's all about the lifetime value. It's all about taking your customers on a journey and encouraging them to buy from you time and time again. Thank you so much for taking part in another Orla B Masterclass and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.